Good morning and welcome to the third annual Housing Santa Barbara Days. Five days with eight free workshops relating to all aspects of housing in Santa Barbara County. For those of you who are not familiar with Housing Santa Barbara Days, it's been held in the month of October as part of National Association uh, of Housing and Redevelopment Officials or NARO's Housing America Month in the month of October. The past two years, we've assembled 30 nonprofit and government agencies in Delaguerra Plaza uh, to get together and have the information available to county residents so that the agencies can answer questions, give out information on services available, and of course on housing options and what each agency offers. The day also featured live music activities uh, for children and families as well as food trucks. And we're hoping that our community is well enough so that next year we'll be back in Delaguerra Plaza. So due to COVID-19, Housing Santa Barbara Day 2020 is virtual this year. We also expanded from a one day event uh, to a multiple day event. So we have a schedule of events where we have eight scheduled workshops presented by experts in their respective fields from local agencies throughout the, uh, throughout the week. Uh, some of the workshops will be held today um, and some on Monday through Thursday. The workshops to be presented today are tenant rights and responsibilities, resources for tenants and landlords for rent and mortgage relief, rental mediation and workforce housing beginning shortly at 10.30 with um, local attorney, Michelle Robertson. Monday through Thursday of next week, there will be one workshop each evening beginning at 5.30. And those topics are resources for undocumented households on Monday. And that workshop will be held in Spanish. On Tuesday, it'll be accessory dwelling units. Wednesday is the emergency disaster preparedness and home ownership programs. And then on Thursday, we'll have the final one, um, which will begin at 5.30 as well. So let's now take a look at the housingsantabarbara.org website. While Housing Santa Barbara Days was an event started by staff from the Housing Authority of the City of Santa Barbara, it is being organized by a number of local nonprofits. The goal from the very start was to have Housing Santa Barbara Days grow into a community-led event. In the next year, this will become even more evident as leaders from various nonprofits will take leading roles in the future of the event and year round efforts to promote affordable housing and supportive services for all of the county of Santa Barbara. We all want the housing, we all want the housingsantabarbara.org website to be the resource for all residents in the county of Santa Barbara, where you can go to get answers regarding all aspects of housing and supportive services. We will be going over to the, um, so this is the uh, landing page of housingsantabarbara.org. And we'll now take a look at the advocacy tab. Um, and this page has our current elected officials uh, information, contact information, so that um, you can directly contact the elect elected local officials. Keep in mind that if there's policy or regulations that you're not happy about, this is a great place to start advocating with your elected officials. For example, if there is a Section 8 regulation you're not happy about, you should reach out to our local congressman, Salud Carbajal. While the local housing choice voucher program is administered locally by the housing authorities in, in the county, it is Congress that enacts changes to the program. So for all city or county funded programs, you should contact correspondent elected officials here in the county. This page will be updated as necessary once the election results have been verified and the new terms begin. We'll now be taking a look at the housing resource guide. This, the affordable housing resource guide is invaluable. Um, it is continually updated and has the most recent information for over 60 housing and supportive services in the County of Santa Barbara. It's a great resource that will always be available to access via the website or to download onto your computer. We'll take a look at it now by going to the index page. While the guide itself has all agencies listed in alphabetical order, the index page helps you find agencies according to the area of their expertise. As you can see now, we're going to download the, um, the and here's the index page. So for example, if you're looking for veteran services, you would scroll down to the left side of that section 
to see which agencies provide those services. Or for mental health on the right side, you would look in that area to see which agencies serve uh, those or provide those services. And once you found an agency that you're interested in, you would find it in the guide in alphabetical order in which it is also referenced by the page number next to it. So for example, if we go to the Independent Living Resource Center, you'll see that it is a private nonprofit organization assisting persons with disabilities of all ages and all income levels serving San Luis Obispo, Santa Barbara, and Ventura counties. When you access it online, it has live links for each agency that will take you directly to the agency's website so that you can read about the services that they have available and the contact information as well. So please use this resource year, year round and um, you, know, you can download it and just save it for reference. So next we're gonna go back to the, um, to the website, to the contact us page. This page is important because it gives you the opportunity to ask a question if you don't know where to find a resource that you're looking for. If you can't find it on the resource guide or you have a specific question or need a particular service, please contact us. We have a group of local professionals from the various nonprofits that are working with housingsantabarbara.org, ready to research the information for you and point you in the right direction, get you the answers that you need. For those of you who are not we're not able to join us for last year's Housing Santa Barbara Day event. We're gonna give you a, a brief glimpse with a video that was created to capture the day's events. It will capture the activities, the music, the information that was shared, the elected officials that were speaking um, with the attendees. And this video is also on the housingsantabarbara.org website. Enjoy the video, please. Working families, they want more time to spend as a family together. They want to live where they work. Middle income families want a place to purchase and low income families want a place that they can afford to rent. But there's a housing crisis right now, especially here in Santa Barbara, it's especially difficult. A lot of these families are moving out of the area. We are already losing the vitality of our downtown area. If nothing is done, we're going to lose our diversity. We lose that cutting edge. Housing Santa Barbara Day is a day of advocacy and a day to connect working families with the resources that are available. We have over 30 agencies all in one place. There's probably a sum total of over 200 years of experience if you bring all these agencies together. Today, we provided face-to-face -face contact with all the agencies. We provided workshops and we gave them the opportunity to meet with our elected officials, the dignitaries that were here today, addressing the crowd, but also here to listen to their concerns. This will have a ripple effect. When you have a family that lives where they work, it really builds community. When children are able to have their own home, it brings a sense of pride. Families are empowered. They're able to stay here. Our community becomes vibrant again. People are successful in finding affordable housing. It's one of the most rewarding feelings that I've ever felt. What we want is for people to advocate and collaborate with city officials and with private entities as well. We have to find creative solutions to this issue. So go to housingsantabarbara.org for more information. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, now we're joined by a few representatives from local agencies that support affordable housing to speak about their respective agencies and the programs available to the residents. Obviously, we're not able to get everybody here today like we did at Housing Santa Barbara Day last year, but we're looking forward to doing that next year. Um, we have uh, three guests today, uh, Rod Frederick, CEO and Executive Director of the Housing Authority of the City of Santa Barbara. Gus Lizraga from the Santa Barbara Community Housing Corporation, and Orion Rutoko from New Beginnings. Welcome, gentlemen. Um, I believe that, okay, there's Rob. Thank you, Rob. Well, first, let's start with Rob. As my colleague at the Housing Authority, I know firsthand how Rob is a hands-on leader. Uh, he knows the agency 
from the ground up, having worked in different capacities from IT to uh, deputy executive director and now as executive director. He's very involved in the community and advocates for affordable housing and the most vulnerable in our community. And he's very active in regional and national housing associations and I'm proud to be able to work alongside him. Welcome Rob and thank you for joining us on this Saturday morning. It's great to have you back. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, great to be back. And uh, I want to thank you and all of our colleagues who have put this uh, uh, virtual webinar together. It's uh, really important that we um, get out and advocate for the, the needed affordable housing and, and uh, explain what that need is and also to show where our resources are locally so people can get access to what is available. So I really appreciate it. And um, I wanted just to start off a few comments about um, the need for housing, uh, both on the national, uh, state and local level. And, um, you know, we, we really are in a housing crisis. And unfortunately, um, during this election time, it hasn't been brought up on the, the national platform for either party, but uh, we need to continue to advocate. Over Nationally, over uh, close to 21 million households are paying more than 50% of their uh, income on housing. So their rent burden, they're giving up basic necessities such as food, insurance, et cetera, just prescriptions, just to keep a, a roof over their head for themselves and their families. And many of them are, because of the rent burdens, are falling out of um, a stable housing situation. And that's why we have, uh, one of the reasons why we have such an explosion of homelessness in, in the country and in California. In California, uh, we have a housing deficit of about 3 million needed homes. Uh, to make up for the need. And about half of that is uh, affordable housing that's needed. And um, so that's, you know, really supply and demand basic economics is a reason why we're in the situation we're in uh, in California uh, with high housing costs. Uh, it's because there's a limited supply of what's available for people across all income levels, not just low income, but moderate income households are, are facing uh, rent burdens as well. And then locally here in Santa Barbara County, uh, there are over uh, 17,000 uh, households in Santa Barbara County that are low-income households that don't have access to uh, safe, decent, and affordable homes that, that is so desperately needed. And um, in our county, in order to afford uh, a basic two-bedroom unit, you would one would have to earn $50 an hour just to just to be able to afford the, um, the basic uh, two bedroom rental uh, average in the county. And that's, that's just out of sight for many of our frontline workers and service workers. They don't earn that amount of money per hour in order to, um, to provide for their families. So um, that's one of the reasons why we exist as a housing authority and um, there are two housing authorities in the county. There's the county housing authority, and then there's our agency, uh, the housing authority of the city of Santa Barbara. Both are wonderful agencies and both really take a mission-driven approach and lean into uh, uh, coming up with solutions for what's needed for affordable housing. And you know, our mission is to create safe, decent, and quality affordable housing opportunities for families and individuals and uh, promoting self-sufficiency and revitalization of neighborhoods. And that's what we're all about because what we want to see for our community is where uh, a place where families and individuals have access to affordable housing and pathways to self-sufficiency. We take a holistic approach that it's not just a roof over one, one's head, it's providing the, the holistic services that a family needs in order to succeed and, and survive. We want to see a community that's inclusive uh, of everyone. And um, you know we've done a fairly good job. This is a map of the city of Santa Barbara and where you can see all the blue dots with the white houses uh, that are depicted. That's our, the hard units that we, we have developed and manage 
uh, here in the city. And we've, uh, we've built over 1,369 units spread throughout the city. And that's, that's a, a, a pretty good job in my estimation. Of course, we need, we need much more than what we've provided. We also, as Jerry mentioned, we're, we provide, we administer the Housing Choice Voucher Program, which is a federal program. Uh, where we receive the funds uh, to pay the majority of rental assistance, rental costs uh, to participants and uh, to the participating landlords to make it easier, release that burden that people are facing. Unfortunately, as I mentioned, uh, only about a quarter of the uh, families that are eligible in the county, anywhere in the country really, receive the assistance. So we need more rental assistance uh, through this program, through the federal government in order to really achieve uh, the meeting the needs uh, in the county, the state and, and locally. So um, that's something that we need to continue to advocate for. And I wanna take this opportunity to thank our landlord community for, for participating. And one of the great things on the voucher program is that um, it's really pandemic proof for landlords that are have you know if you have renters that don't have the rental assistance right now they're not a, a lot of people are not able to pay because they're out of work because of the pandemic with the voucher program we're able to continue those payments to the landlord community so it's really very helpful uh, to families and the landlord community I want to show a couple of uh, properties that we've been able to finish recently and um, something that we're really proud of, even in the face of the pandemic. This is Johnson Court uh, over on the east side of Santa Barbara, and it's 17 studio units uh, dedicated to serving veterans moving from homelessness. And, um, you know, I mentioned that we, we take more of a holistic approach, that it's more than just housing, and we partner with wonderful agencies. And here we partner with New Beginnings Counseling Services to provide the needed on-site services to provide for whatever the residents may need to continue living successfully and to have a place called home. Here's another picture of, of Johnson Court. And then here is uh, the Gardens on Hope, which is on Hope Avenue uh, up in the La Cumbra area. It's right across uh, Arroyo Miradero Creek from La Cumbra Plaza. And it's 89 senior units dedicated to um, frail seniors that can no longer live fully independently that might need help with uh, additional uh, daily activities. And we provide three meals a day here, uh, housekeeping services, uh, host of uh, social services, all utilities are paid, including uh, cable t basic cable TV and phone service. And it really um, provides a safe place for um, our frail seniors uh, to call home and, and continue, continue to have them thrive in the community where they've called home for several years. And uh, it's re we're really proud of this development. Um, a couple of uh, developments on the horizon that we're working on. Uh, I mentioned that uh, uh, there's a great need for moderate income households, those that don't qualify for um, low income uh, affordable housing, but also can't afford market rate. So we're working with the city on coming up with a development uh, to, to meet the needs of moderate income housing as a pilot, and then to rep, hopefully it, it'll be a success as our other developments have been, where we can replicate uh, this type of development throughout the city and where uh, they're smaller units, but we can provide more and it's more targeted for that moderate income household uh, that needs uh, uh, affordable housing as well. And then uh, additionally on the horizon, we have uh, development that we purchased uh, uh, is a commercial development medical office buildings that was built in the, the uh, 1960s and it's at 200 North La Cumbra. So it's in the Hope School District up by La Cumbra area. And uh, here we're planning affordable fa family units. In the past several years, we've focused on, on special needs developments and we know there's a great need for affordable housing for families uh, that 
uh, need adequate uh, space uh, for their for their families. And so this is a development that's in the planning stages that we're very excited about. And um, in order to get these built, one thing we need is uh, positive advocacy from the community. So we hope uh, that when we have community meetings, when we're ready to roll this out, that the community will come out and learn more about the development and will take their input and that they could support this development. And then uh, finally, our um, other development that's uh, in the pipeline and, and we hope to get a, a tax credit uh, application for funding uh, in the first round of next year is a uh, property we purchased at 116 East Coda Street that was uh, designed and, and owned by a private uh, uh, development entity that they were going to build market rate uh, housing here. And what we really need is affordable housing. So uh, we were able to purchase this property from them and we're converting what was gonna be um, 15 two bedroom units into 28 studios. And there's still a great need for helping uh, our neighbors move from homelessness. People that are literally living without a home, they may be living in their vehicles. And uh, here's a place that uh, we can provide 28 studio units and uh, provide the, the uh, uh, on-site supportive services here, uh, with partnering with our other agencies that can provide those services and kind of modeling af after our very successful El Carrillo development that's been in place now for over uh, coming up on 15 years. So um, that's what we're all about. And, you know, we have a, we have a variety of other programs that we uh, manage, uh, rental programs that some that don't have assistance, but are below market rate. And I encourage any uh, household out there that needs help that's in the city of Santa Barbara to uh, come uh, to our website and apply for, um, for assistance. And uh, there's such a great need that you, we might not be able to get to you immediately, but we get you on the list. And uh, when we have turnover, we can uh, outreach to you and, and hopefully provide you a safe place to call home. And uh, here's a list of uh, different resources up on the screen. And uh, the, the upper link is the Housing Santa Barbara website that Jerry mentioned. That's really a wonderful website that encompasses everything that's available. And then our, our, our two agency websites, our Housing Authority and the County Housing Authority is where you can go to and apply online. We try and make it easy so people can just apply online, whether it's on their smartphone or laptop or uh, borrowing a friend's computer, they can borrow online. And then I have some listings here of other um, resources. If you're a resident that's that's having trouble legally and concerned about eviction during this time when there's uh, moratoriums in place, uh, Legal Aid Foundation has uh, resources that you can access through them. Also on the city's website, uh, they have uh, great information on the state's uh, bill that recently passed that uh, supplants a lot of local uh, moratorium regulations and that's on there. And we'll post this uh, uh, on Facebook and online after um, the webinar so that you have access to these links. And then the Santa Barbara Foundation has wonderful um, COVID resource guide as well. And then United Way is providing grant resources for individuals and households in need for covering rent and whatnot. Uh, if it, they have to be income eligible and, but, but go to their website and you'll, you'll be hearing about that today, actually, some of the resources that they have. And, um, you know, it, it really does um, take all of us working together, all of these, there are many, many different agencies that are working to uh, lean into uh, providing solutions. There's the County of Santa Barbara Housing Community Development Department that really helped us move uh, a lot of uh, people from homelessness, even during uh, the, the COVID lockdown to provide safe housing. And I wanna thank them for that. Uh, and all of the other nonprofits that are holding hands during this time and, and leaning into this. So you're gonna learn more about all of these resources today through the different programs that Jerry's put together. And finally, one thing I wanna uh, bring up is what the city's doing 
uh, here in Santa Barbara with uh, some of their adjustments to um, their affordable housing policies that are very important. Uh, last year, they enacted a, an inclusionary housing policy that requires new multifamily developments to provide at least 10 percent uh, of uh, the new units are built to uh, moderate income households because uh, there's a great need that's there that's not being met. And um, I want to thank the uh, city folks for, for moving that forward, our city council, because it's so needed. And they're also looking at further adjustments to that program to provide further incentives and resources for developers to um, to build more affordable housing because it's so needed in our community. Um, and uh, the county also has some great programs as well for that. So um, that's all I have, Jerry, for now. And I'll, I'll stick around and uh, answer questions at the end if there's any questions directed to me. Thank you, Rob. Thanks for that great overview. Um, and, you know, it's, it's true. We, we definitely have a, a huge need for affordable housing in our community. Uh, and thanks for that shout out to the landlords, because without our landlord community, our Section 8 program would not be as successful as it is now. It's uh, definitely needed for our workers. And um, so, you know, thank you, landlords, for, for participating and continuing to support the program. So next up, we have uh, Gus Lizarraga from the Santa Barbara Housing Community, Santa Barbara Community Housing Corporation, excuse me. I've had the pleasure of working um, with this great organization and with Gus directly through the Section 8 program. Welcome, Gus. Hello, am I there? Hello. Um, let's see here. Let's try and get you, uh, there you are. Can you hear me? Welcome, Gus, yes. Okay. Welcome, and thank you for joining us on Saturday morning. Can you just tell us a little bit about what you do at the Community Housing Corporation and what your what services your organization offers? Sure. Uh, me personally, I'm the controller, um, which means I get involved in a lot of accounting, some of the audit functions. But you know, we're a small organization, so um, everybody kind of does everything. I get involved with maintenance, <clears throat> and everybody deals, you know, um, with you know, direct contact with tenants. Um, but um, our organization um, is called Santa Barbara Community Housing Corporation. Um, it is a nonprofit organization that's dedicated to providing safe and affordable housing, including uh, unique needs housing for underserved individuals in our region. In addition to providing stable housing, it is our goal to enhance each tenant's self-respect, personal motivation, and future independence. <clears throat> there is a critical and growing shortage of affordable housing for low-income and moderate-income families throughout the nation. This crisis is particularly severe in Santa Barbara County where exorbitant home prices and skyrocketing rents are driving housing costs out of financial reach for many. And uh, we're faced with the grim reality that a lot of modest income um, folks are being displaced out of our neighborhoods with the resulting disintegration of the social fabric so vital to the health of our community. Um, dealing with today's housing crisis requires fresh innovative solutions that involving active cooperation between public and private sectors at every level SBCHC is working diligently to achieve these cooperative solutions. Um, our organization was created in 1975. Uh, since then has developed um, over 700 uh, low or moderate income housing units in our county. Um, we've built a strong reputation for, I think, organizational stability and creativity, working with public and private housing partners and financing its projects through these various partnerships. Um, the agency is involved in a wide range of housing activity throughout the community, um, including rehabilitation of low-income property. Um, one of our most recent properties, um, middle area of State Street, which was a motel that we converted um, to um, about uh, 10, 11 units um, and recently went under construction. Um, it now looks beautiful. Um, we also manage um, you know, a bunch of different other multifamily housing projects throughout the county. Um, and unique, need, unique needs housing as well. Uh, oversight, we provide oversight of private and public finance affordable housing partnerships, as we have partnerships on a lot of these properties with different programs. Um, we provide advocacy planning and technical assistance for affordable housing as well. Um, presently, we manage 16 multifamily properties um, and also single occupancy properties, totaling about 320 units with around 600 residents roughly and we have a couple of unique needs projects that serve about 110 residents. 
um, most of whom also receive supportive services, life skills services. Um, in addition to property management role, um, our agency is also aggressively seeking and exploring solutions to the challenging need for more housing in our community. Um, as an example of one of our projects, Hotel de Riviera, commonly known as HDR, which is on Carrillo uh, near the fire station. Um, it provides uh, affordable housing, including unique needs housing for underserviced individuals. Uh, the goal at ACR is to um, enhance each tenant's self-respect, personal motivation, and future independence. This is done through quality counseling, helping to obtain affordable psychological services and developing innovative outreach programs for the community, as well as educating the public on important mental health issues. Um, as well as being a dual diagnosis program, Hotel de Rivera provides permanent supportive housing. Uh, the initial goal is to keep residents clean and sober and participating in uh, mental health treatment. Um, second goal is to generate interest in normal living patterns. Um, Another example of one of our programs that we offer, um, we recently or fairly recently created um, and are expanding a food pantry program um, for our residents. It primarily started at the Folding Hotel, which is located on Haley Street, just off of State Street. Many of you are familiar with. Um, and we now have expanded that program to other of our multifamily properties within the SBCHC stable. Um, program seeks to provide um, low income and more vulnerable tenants with weekly access to healthier foods. Um, the program was developed in partnership with PATH and helps to improve the health and financial stability of our tenants. Um, we're currently researching ways that we can expand the program to even more of our clients and tenants uh, as the program has been operating fairly successfully for the past two years. Um, it's an example of how SBCHC is always trying to expand access to resources and services for our tenants. Mm -hmm. Although uh, SBCAC no longer develops new properties, um, we're working to preserve uh, the community's existing affordable housing stock by rehabilitating and converting multifamily apartment complexes to not-for-profit cooperative ownership. Um, a majority of our tenants participate in rental assistance programs administered by the Housing Authority of the City of Santa Barbara, as well as many from the County Housing Authority. Um, our partnership with the Housing Authority has been outstanding. Uh, we regard them as our most important collaborator. We make every effort to work with the Housing Authority and appreciate tremendously the quality of service they provide, as well as the amazing people that work there. Uh, we understand that our community is facing a unique housing crisis that will likely be exacerbated by COVID-19. The current conditions mean that we will need to work harder towards providing solutions for our community, but we greatly look forward to the future and to making our contribution to improve the quality of life for low-income individuals residing in the County of Santa Barbara. Um, if you are interested in housing with us, uh, you can go to our website, which is www.chcsb.com. And there you can also download, we have the application for housing is available under the application link. Um, and you can mail that to 11 East Haley Street, Santa Barbara, California, 93101. Uh, you can also call us 805-963-9644. Uh, and we can help you with any um, issues. If you need help filling out the application, any questions about our properties and programs, you can reach us there. Um, you can also email, if you'd like to email us at front desk at s, or excuse me, front desk at chcsb.com. Um, that's all I have for you today. Um, thank you very much for letting us participate. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Gus. Um, Gus did mention uh, how the, the Santa Barbara Community Housing Corporation um, works with persons with unique needs. Um, they deal with our most vulnerable in, in Santa Barbara County. You and Cindy and the rest of the gang do a great job and, and we thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks you. for joining us today. So next we have um, Orion Brutico from New Beginnings Counseling Center. Welcome, Orion. Coming in right now. Okay, just, just before you get started, Orion, um, for those of you just joining us, we are running a few minutes late. Michelle um, Robertson is, is waiting to get her workshop started. Uh, my apologies to you, Michelle, uh, but we'll be with you just in a couple minutes with the uh, workshop on tenant rights and responsibilities. Orion, thank you for joining us today and uh, take it away. See, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay. All right. So welcome, everybody. Thanks for having me. Uh, Jerry, 
and uh, welcome everybody to the Housing Day. Um, thanks for having uh, New Beginnings to be a part of this. My name is Orion Budrico. I'm a housing navigator for New Beginnings Counseling Center, uh, most specifically the Safe Parking Program. And uh, at New Beginnings, we have uh, ment mental health services. We provide mental health services, counseling, and other programming through our counseling center. And in addition to that, we have two housing programs, the Safe Parking Shelter and Rapid Rehousing Program and the Supportive Services for Veterans Families Program. Originally launched through advocates and the County Board of Supervisors in 2003, New Beginnings began operating our Safe Parking Program in 2004. The program repurposes existing community resources, i.e. parking lots, to provide a safe place to park each night for 150 community members. We serve roughly 500 to 600 individuals each year. These confidential lots are monitored nightly and clients work with case managers to address their needs, gain stability, and transition back into permanent housing. The program has evolved uh, over the years to offer a rapid rehousing program, uh, which I work in now, and we work to offer um, other unsheltered individuals in South County um, housing opportunities uh, that are referred to us through this coordinated entry system. Um, in light of COVID and what's going on in, in recent months, we've added two full-time positions to provide additional services of case management and housing navigation to some of the most vulnerable uh, unsheltered folks in our community. And uh, in this last quarter alone, during all of this instability, or instability of, of coronavirus, um, we are set, uh, we've housed 18 individuals and are set to surpass our previous average of 60 individuals per year. Let me go down to our next slide. Uh, the New Beginnings mission is to provide high quality affordable housing, or sorry, affordable counseling, shelter, case management, and education that provides our clients with the ability to lead healthy and productive lives. Four core programs that we offer are Community Counseling Center. New Beginnings has been around for over 50 years providing counseling services. Uh, we have life skills parenting and education programs, the Safe Parking Shelter and Rapid Rehousing Program, and the Supportive Services for Veteran Families Program. In 2013, New Beginnings began operating the uh, Supportive Services for Veterans Families Program, which is a program funded by the VA, and it works to rehouse homeless uh, veterans and their families. In total, since then, New Beginnings has served over 1,000 vets and their families. Through our two housing programs, New Beginnings has transitioned approximately 2,000 community members from homelessness into permanent housing. And in our last fiscal year, New Beginnings provided over $600,000 in direct financial assistance to our clients to help them move into housing. So that's kind of like a brief overview of what we do. Uh, we're super excited to be uh, here in Housing Day. And if you have any questions, uh, it, or if you know somebody or see somebody that has a vehicle or wants to get into our lots, we're, uh, we're expanding our lots now. We have more parking spots available. Um, if you know a veteran or, or, or you work with a veteran that needs assistance, uh, you can always call us at 805-963-7777. Uh, um, if you want to reach the safe parking, that's our main counseling center number, and they can refer you to each department. Um, and if you want to if you want to reach out to, to me or you're a landlord or you possibly have a place to rent, um, you, can, you can reach me. Uh, my, my cell phone number is 805-770-0853. And I just want to thank all of the landlords that have made this possible just in the last quarter alone. Um, we've worked uh, with agencies uh, during this time of coronavirus. We've worked with landlords um, to make this possible and more, more people are getting housed during this time of coronavirus, and it's, it's, it's a miracle for people that are living on the street. And um, it, we, we recently housed somebody that was, that was on the street for 40 years. And, I, and I, that, that was amazing. It was amazing to see that person in a home, and that wouldn't have been possible without our partnerships with the community, um, our partnerships with landlords, and um, the, the the commitment of, of everyone um, that works in this community. So thank you to everyone and thanks for having me today. Thank you, Ryan. And thank you for giving us a brief overview of the services that New Beginnings Counseling Center offers. Very, very important to our community. Um, 
I can't tell you, you know, how many times I've learned that somebody that I have worked with directly or indirectly um, was living in their vehicle. And so the safe parking program is, is vital to our community. Unfortunately, you know, we, we have that need. Hopefully someday we'll get to the point where we won't need that. But in the meantime, thank you very much.